Mike D. Eisenhower, sincere and vigorous, a man in any cloth, soldier, educator, or statesman, architect of victory in Europe. In World War II, he swept the forces of Hitler to total defeat. He returned home, and his own people took him to their hearts. In New York, he waved happily as a storm of confetti and ticker tape swirled down around him. He was the man of the hour. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Here are the facts. In 1958, President Eisenhower created the Advanced Research Projects Agency, or ARPA. Its purpose was to ensure that the U.S. maintained a technological edge over the rest of the world. ARPA's research eventually led to the creation of the Internet. Thanks to this technology, the cost of transmitting information has plummeted. Messages that once required days or months of dangerous travel can arrive in moments via email. Communicating is easier now than at any other point in history. As a consequence, it is also much more difficult to keep secrets. This has triggered the rise of a new generation of whistleblowers, digital activists using technology to communicate. As governments struggle to adapt, they collect more formally private information about individual citizens. Pundits in the mainstream debate age-old questions of statecraft. How much liberty should citizens sacrifice to maintain security? Conspiracy theorists often dismiss this debate as a diversion. To many theorists, the world's governments are not making knee-jerk reactions. Instead, they are following a plan. Here's where it gets crazy. It's no surprise that conspiracy theorists distrust the government, especially when it comes to issues directly affecting individuals, such as taxation or privacy. For example, it's a common belief among theorists that the federal government can, and does, follow the social interactions of anyone it wishes, without the need for warrants or other judicial oversight. It's also not surprising that governments and businesses aggressively target leaks, especially if national security is involved. Bradley Manning is one of the most immediate examples. This soldier has been held by the U.S. government since May of 2010, accused of violating the Uniform Code of Military Justice by leaking data on the U.S. war in Afghanistan to WikiLeaks and its leader, Julian Assange. Experts believe that Manning, who is being held in solitary confinement, is being pressured to implicate Julian Assange in a crime so that the U.S. may demand Assange's extradition. To some, Manning and Assange are criminals and should be treated as such. To others, these men are genuine whistleblowers. One of the most interesting conspiracy theories surrounding digital whistleblowers is that they are agent provocateurs, paid to create false flag cyber attacks. Why? According to the theorists that believe this, the situation with WikiLeaks, Anonymous, and other groups is part of a calculated effort to erode individual freedoms and privacy. In this theory, Assange and Manning aren't martyrs. Instead, they're co-conspirators in a plot to justify a nationwide loss of privacy. As evidence, these theorists point to recent actions such as the U.S. government's refusal to repeal the Patriot Act and repeated requests for personal user information from companies like Google, Facebook, Twitter, and various internet service providers. They also point to a perceived lack of coverage on certain subjects and companies by the leakers. Yet there is no solid proof to support this theory. Businesses and governments still pursue the new generation of whistleblowers without pause. In the process, they have asked for cooperation from companies and, increasingly, for more private data about the average John or Jane Doe. It's true that an individual's privacy is frequently seen as a regrettable casualty in the war against whistleblowers, cyber terrorists, and hackers. But it seems a stretch to believe that all these forces are somehow working together. Unless, of course, there's something they don't want you to know. According to whistleblower Edward Snowden, the NSA collects metadata on all phone calls made on Verizon's network. And that's just the beginning. The former CIA tech and NSA contractor also leaked details about a surveillance program called PRISM, 